Hi there. I'm Josh Levin, one of the managers of customer success here at Honeycomb. And I'm here to talk about using Honeycomb to troubleshoot production incidents using all three forms of telemetry data, metrics, traces, and logs in conjunction together through Honeycomb to build a story on what's going on in your production systems. Um, Honeycomb being a trace first tool, we oftentimes start conversations with customers around using tracing as your primary mode of investigation. But we understand that there's a lot of context to be gathered from metrics data and logging data alongside tracing. And Honeycomb as a tool accepts all three forms of telemetry together, allowing you to do that investigation in a single pane of glass. Now, it's worth pointing out when we say single pane of glass, we don't necessarily mean all through the same UI, all through the same page, as in having tracing, metrics, and logs all view, viewed in the same UX. Um, the reason being is that they all represent different forms of data, different lenses of the incidents. What we do mean by single pane of glass is being able to stay within the Honeycomb UI, do an investigation across those three forms of telemetry, and build a picture without having to jump between tools, resetting time frames, understanding what the nomenclature means across different tool sets. You can do it all through Honeycomb. Um, to show you how to do this, I'm, I'll be showing you dog food. And what dog food is, is Honeycomb's uh, production instance. It's Honeycomb on Honeycomb, essentially. Um, in order to understand uh, what this query represents, it's worth pointing out um, one of the core parts of our infrastructure, one of the core parts of our architecture is a, a tool that we call Retriever. Now, when you as a customer send data to Honeycomb after it makes it past our ingress, um, it gets uh, put on a Kafka queue. And then as it's pulled off of the Kafka queue, um, it gets persisted into um, Retriever, this which is a columnar data store, proprietary columnar data store. Um, and that's how it's stored long-term, um, or it's part of the story of how it's stored long-term. The point is, is that Retriever as a service is core to how our tool ingests data and allows you later to query that data. So understandably, understanding the health of Retriever from a bunch of different lenses is supremely important to us. Um, so we have a bunch of different data sets to do that. Um, to start off this investigation, we'll look at Retriever traces. So it's tracing data from Retriever. We're looking at some basic information like heat map of duration and P95 of duration. I have it grouped by pod name and error as well. Um, because Retriever runs on Kubernetes. And that's key to understanding this because the metrics and logs that we'll be looking at are from Kubernetes. Now, if we just look at the last 14 days, there was this kind of interesting spike of, uh, of latency. And if we scroll down, we see that the error, it seems, associated with this spike in latency is this update status failed. Now, for the sake of showing you these different forms of telemetry in the same uh, view, we can run bubble up and do the typical kind of bubble up research. This is this video is not for bubble up. There's plenty of great resources out there on our site around using bubble up, but bubble up tells you part of the story for the tracing data, because again, we're in tracing data here, it tells you that it seems to all be associated with a particular build, which makes sense, a particular commit, again, makes sense, and a specific error, which will come into play. Um, if we wanted to compare this to metrics data, just to see, hey, maybe something's going on with like, uh, how the pods and nodes are being deployed, how the resident set size is being is, is value is going up and down. We can do that here. We hover, we just hover over this spike in latency, and we see is there anything odd about things like the file system capacity, the memory available, the RSS, and nothing sticks out. Seems pretty normal. But the point is that we have the ability to really quickly cross validate metrics data here with tracing data. Now this metrics data is coming over in a separate data set um, and we just built a board um, of queries for interesting things from that data set. So you just go into boards, you create a interesting set of uh, metrics related queries, and then you're able to go to this metrics tab and cross validate it with the tracing data here. Now, going back here, we see again that this app error is client update status failed for all of them. Now, if we really wanted to validate that against some logging data, just to make sure that we had this right, and maybe there's some interesting things to be found in logging data, we have logging data in this Kubernetes log table here, this Kubernetes log data set. And all I'm doing here is doing a count um, and filtering on this log field. So in this, in this data set, we have this log field, which shows us 
um, in somewhat messy format, um, the log messages coming through. And I want to specifically look at those that have this update status in the log line somewhere. So in the log description, somewhere, some mention of update status. I can do that here, run it. I get a result. And then I can really just treat Honeycomb like you would a log aggregator. A, a tool that, the tools that you're used to using for uh, parsing through log lines, you can absolutely do that here, do the raw data. And then of course, from here, if you find anything interesting here, maybe around the container resources, you can click this, filter on, filter on these fields, run new queries and bounce back and forth really easily from here back to the traces and build this use case, build this picture using all three forms of telemetry data in a way that's meaningful and in a way that's developer friendly. It doesn't require you to reset a whole set a whole bunch of values. Um, if I were to go from Kubernetes logs back to uh, uh, Retriever traces, for instance, you'll notice that it'll do its best to maintain the integrity of the trace. The last 14 days, the same time frame is kept. If you found an interesting snapshot in time in your tracing data and you pivot over to a tracing or logging or metrics data set, it maintains that because we want to help you build this picture using all three forms of data. If you have any questions further about this, don't hesitate to reach out to us through our support queue, through your CSM if you have a CSM or through your customer contact. Thanks so much for your time.